This is the 2019 BMW M850i, and it is the new flagship model in the BMW lineup. No, it's not quite as expensive as the M760i luxury sedan, but it is the new king of the lineup in terms of design, styling, status, and most importantly, the name 8 Series, which is being revived after a 22-year hiatus. Today, I'm going to take you on a tour of this car and give it a full review. I've borrowed this M850i from Crevier BMW here in Orange County, California. They are the largest BMW dealer in North America by sales, which means they get all of the cool stuff. So it's no surprise they've already gotten in the new 8 Series, which has just gone on sale within the last few weeks. Before I get started, a little overview. The original 8 Series was BMW's flagship luxury coupe, and it was sold in North America from 1991 to 1997 before it was eventually canceled due to slow sales. BMW eventually revived a big two-door as the 6 Series, but this is a step above that. The M850i starts right around $113,000, which makes it more expensive than the equivalent 7 Series. This car has a twin turbocharged V8 with 523 horsepower, and it'll do 0 to 60 in 3.6 seconds, which is pretty impressive. Of course, it's also full of luxury quirks and features, and so today I'm going to show them to you. And for more of my thoughts on the new M850i, click the link below to visit autotrader.com slash oversteer. Now, I'm going to start the quirks and features of the 8 Series with the door panel lighting, which might not sound that exciting, but check this out. In a normal car, when you open the door, it usually turns on a little red light to let approaching bicyclists and cars know that a door is open, but in this car, it goes so much further than that. Take a look at this. When you open the door, it changes the color of the interior mood lighting to red, and it starts flashing to let oncoming traffic know that the door is open. This is the coolest door open lighting that has ever existed in the entire car industry. I just can't get enough of it. They have red flashing lights inside the doors so you don't get hit when you open your door. Next up, moving inside, we move on to the gear lever, and it seems that BMW has finally retreated from its bizarre shaped gear levers of old and back to a relatively standard looking gear lever, although it does have one little weird quirk to it. Instead of a button on the side that you just push, it says unlock which has the same function as a button you just push. You press unlock and then you can move it between gears. Not sure why that's the word they choose, but that's what it does. Next, we move on to the sun visors. You drop them, they're just like normal sun visors, and they have mirrors in them, although the mirrors are incredibly small. Like a 1980s supercar, you can completely cover them with just two fingers, but there they are, the tiny visor mirrors of the new 8 series. Now, in addition to that gear lever going back to sort of a normal shape, BMW has also gone back to normal turn signal levers, which makes me so happy. On prior BMWs, you'd put on the turn signal, and then the lever would return to the middle position, so you never really knew if it was on. Finally, they've ditched that, and they're back to regular turn signal levers. You push it down to turn on the left turn signal, it stays down. Push it up for the right signal, it stays up. This is something that did not need to be reinvented, so I'm glad they have it. Next up, also in the vicinity of the turn signal, is the steering wheel. And specifically, you have the cruise control functions over on the left. They're all pretty standard. This car has adaptive cruise control, so it'll slow down or speed up depending on traffic in front of you. But there's also a button marked LIM. If you press that, this car will detect the speed limit signs and then slow down or speed up accordingly. So if you have it set to the 65 mile an hour speed limit, you enter a 55 zone, it will automatically slow down for you. Now, of course, no one in North America really goes the speed limit, but this could be cool on the Autobahn if you're in a de-restricted section and then you enter a section with speed limit restrictions, the car will automatically brake to get down to the speed limit. It's a good idea. Next up, the center console around the gear lever has a very cool silver material to it. It looks good, it feels good, and there's this little door right in front of the gear lever. When you open it, it reveals the cup holders and the wireless charging pad. The door itself, though, is finished in that nice silver texture. Next up, here's a rather unusual one. This car has heated and cooled seats, but it only has the button for heated seats. If you press that button, you turn on the heated seats, and you keep pressing it, and it increases your seat heating. So, how do you turn on the cooled seats? Well, when you push the button, 
a little display comes on in the infotainment screen letting you choose between heated or cooled seats and you can adjust the cooled seats from there. It's very strange when you adjust the cooled seats the little lights in the heated seat button turn blue and red I guess so you know that you have the cooled seats on. So the heated seats are controlled by the button but the cooled seats you press the button and then you have to change them in the screen. It's a rather odd decision but I guess it does remove some button clutter from the center control stack. Now, next up, I want to draw your attention to the interior lighting. You can see it on the door panel. You can see it on the side of the center console, this purple hue. It is really cool looking, and it very much sets the mood inside this car. More on the interior lighting in a little bit. Now, next, we move on to the map lights in the 8 Series. You can turn them on by pressing a little button on the ceiling next to the rear view mirror. And as you can see, they aren't just regular map lights, but instead, they have some character to it, these nice little lines that make it a lot cooler than a normal map light. Interestingly, those lines are also repeated in a spot you may not expect, the dead pedal. So BMW has made sure to tie in the map lights with the dead pedal using this flowy little line graphic. And next up, we move on to turning on the new 8 Series, and specifically the exhaust note, which sounds surprisingly good. I assume this would be a comfortable luxury cruiser, but when you hear it, you'll think sports car. Take a listen. <laughs> Next, we move on to the rear seats of the new 8 Series, and in order to access them, you pull a little loop on the front seat, the seat folds forward, and then it automatically whirs forward to provide as much access as possible. Now, unfortunately, that isn't really all that much access, so it's not incredibly easy to get back here, but nonetheless, I will, because that's what I must do for you people. Now, when you're back here, the first thing you will discover is indeed there just isn't really all that much room and there's nothing particularly nice or special back here. The windows don't even roll down. If you want nice roomy rear seats in the 8 Series, you'll have to wait for the 8 Grand Coupe which will for some reason be a sedan, assuming that they make it. Now it's worth noting, however, that there are child seat anchors back here. So if for some reason you have children and you decide you simply must have an 8 Series, you can get them back here. Although I can't imagine trying to stick a child seat back here in the back of this car. Now next we move up front. And I want to start with the laser headlights, which are sort of the next advancement in headlights. There were the Xenons, then LEDs. Now we're on lasers. They have an incredible field of vision. They can see everywhere, but they're not my favorite part of the headlights. Instead, my favorite thing is the running lights. If you approach them from the side, they look like hollow glass pieces, but then when you come around to the front, you can see that the running lights are on, and somehow they've managed to illuminate that hollow glass. It is one of the coolest looks if you actually look closely at it, and I really like seeing it on BMWs. Next, moving up to the front, you can see the grill. It's the same old kidney grill we've come to expect from BMW models, getting larger as the years go on, but it's still the same one, although if you look closely, you can see it's closed. There's nothing behind it. Well, that's because this is an active grill, and if you turn on the car and drive it fast and it needs to suck in air, it will open up the grill to get air in, but in its normal state, it remains closed, which helps slightly improve aerodynamics and give the car just a little bit better fuel economy. Next up, we move under the hood, so you can see the engine, and right now, this is the flagship model in the 8 Series range, although I imagine there will be an M8 that eventually comes out to beat it, but for now, this is it, and it uses a pretty impressive powertrain. It's a twin turbo V8 with 523 horsepower and 553 pound-feet of torque. Those are strong numbers, and I also like the fact that it says M Performance on the plastic engine cover, just to emphasize that it isn't an M8, but it's getting there. Next, we move on to the back of the M850. I where there are a couple of interesting quirks, one of which is the exhaust. Now, if you look at the back of the car, you can see there are openings for dual exhausts, but if you actually look in the openings, you can see that each opening has two pipes, so this car could have quad exhausts, and of course, they're not quite as big as the openings, although that's a pretty standard trend in the industry now. I wonder why they didn't just give it quad exhausts. It would look a lot cooler, but maybe they're saving that for the M8. And next up, I want to move on to the trunk although there's something especially interesting in the trunk. You pop it open and it opens automatically as you'd expect for a luxury coupe. You can see it's a fairly large trunk, should have no trouble getting your golf clubs in here, but nothing particularly unusual about it except for what is on the top of the trunk, this tiny little body-colored spoiler that sort of starts in the middle and then goes around to the back and makes a bit of a U shape. This is a very small spoiler as spoilers go, but it's still on there just to emphasize sportiness 
a little bit. Now, next up on the outside of this car, moving on to the roof, you'll notice that this car has no sunroof. Instead, it has this carbon fiber roof panel, which is a $3,000 option. Now, in a car like this, you see the sticker price, $112,000, $113,000 with destination, and you think, oh, well, they're going to screw you on the options. But in this car, it's actually interesting. This car only has two options. It has the comfort seating package for $900, and the carbon fiber roof panel is $3,000, and that's it. It brings the MSRP to like $116,000 from a base price of like $112,000. Compared to Porsche, who wants to charge you for round wheels and transparent windows, it's actually nice how much stuff comes standard in this car, even though admittedly it has a pretty high price tag. Now, one other item I want to mention on the outside of the car before I dive into technology is just the appearance of it. I think this is a really nice looking car. BMW gets some flack in the enthusiast community for the fact their cars have become sort of big and bloated. I understand that criticism, but it's worth noting this 8 Series is only 3 inches longer than the original 8 Series from 25, 30 years ago. So it really hasn't grown all that much. And personally, I really like the look of this design. It's clean. It's not trying too hard with all sorts of flares and cuts and gouges. It just looks nice. Now, next up, back to the inside of the M850i, I want to cover some of its tech features, and I'm going to start in the gauge cluster, which looks very cool. This is a totally new gauge cluster for BMW models. Now, as you can see, the gauge cluster is one large screen, but it's split into sort of three different areas. Over on the left, you have the speedometer. In the middle, you would have the navigation map, and on the right, that's configurable. You press this little BC button on the end of the turn signal stock, and you can choose between various different items that you want to see displayed. You have the drive mode, the fuel economy, your g-forces, and my personal favorite, it'll show you your real-time horsepower and torque if that's what you want to see while you're driving down the road. Now, the gauge cluster is also the source of a rather interesting warning message. If the car is off and you want to just pop the hood, you can do that, open up the hood, no problem. But if the car is hot, for example, if it's running or if it's just been running and the engine is warm and you want to open the hood, it will pop up a warning message as soon as you open up the hood saying, engine warm, open carefully just to let you know, in addition to common sense dictating that you probably should be careful, that, hey, the engine might be hot and you might burn yourself. Interestingly, BMW also places that warning message over on the infotainment screen. They really want to emphasize the fact that you need to know the engine might be hot, so you might not actually want to open it right now. Now, speaking of the infotainment screen, I've covered most of the features of BMW's new infotainment system in my review of the new M5, which I will link in the description below. So in this video, I'm only going to cover some of the rather interesting quirks, and I'm going to start with the little preset buttons. Now, in this car, you can preset them for anything. It doesn't just have to be radio presets. There's a lot of different options. But my favorite thing about the preset buttons is you don't have to tap them just to remind yourself what the preset is. Instead, just slide your finger over them, and the system will detect that you're sliding your finger over, and it will tell you in the screen what that preset is for. It's so cool. In so many other cars, you'd have to remember what's preset six, but in this thing, just sort of slide your finger over preset six, and it'll let you know. That's so cool. I also like the fact that this car has gesture control, which is this new idea that BMW is trying out to eliminate buttons. Instead, you can just use gestures to do stuff. For example, if you move your finger in the shape of a circle, it will turn up the stereo volume. You can see it's working right now. You turn it the other way, and it will turn down the stereo volume. This is the future, or at least Maybe this is the future. It's actually reasonably easy to use, but only for a few things. You don't want to have to replace all the navigation and the climate functions with all sorts of different gestures, and then you basically have to know sign language in order to operate your BMW. But it is cool for a couple functions. Another cool feature with the latest version of BMW's infotainment system is the fact that you can save your driver profile to the cloud which doesn't sound like something you'd actually want to do because who really cares, but here's the benefit. You get into a service loaner, you take your car into the shop, and then you can just have your profile appear and it will have all of your presets already set, your seating position, and so you don't have to reset all those things since your profile's in the cloud and it can be transferred to any BMW with the latest system. That's pretty cool. Next up, another cool item. In your car, you have heated seats. You may even have heated rear seats, but this car takes it a step further. It has a heated armrest. You can go into the infotainment system, configure the armrest to come on with the seats, and then your butt isn't just warm when you're driving down the street on a cold day. Your forearm is also warm. You're in the lap of luxury. 
Another interesting item I mentioned before, I love those purple accent mood lights throughout the interior, but of course you can change them. For example, here's what happens if you want to change them to green. You can see they all change. It really is a comprehensive mood lighting system in this interior. You can also change it. Here's orange, for instance, and then I can change it to bronze. You have a few different options, and it really does sort of change the mood in the interior of this car because of how many of those lights there are. Finally, two more quirks of the infotainment system that I absolutely love. One is the voice control wake word. Okay, so you're driving along, you want to turn on voice control and have it listen to what you say and respond. You can press this little microphone icon on the steering wheel, or you can say, hello, BMW. And then the car will instantly listen to whatever you're going to say next. That's the wake word to let the system know that you're going to talk to it, but you can also set your own wake word. So for example, you can customize it to be something like this. Please tell me the activation word that you want to use to start voice control in the future. Hello, Mercedes-Benz. Do that and then take a look. Yes, the car will accept it. And actually it gets better. You could really get creative if you want. Please say my new personal activation word. Free the Brontosaurus. And the car accepted that one too, although not quite, but I suppose it will do. I find it interesting the word they got right was brontosaurus, and the one they got wrong was free, which is kind of interesting. Now, one other funny item in the infotainment system is the fact that you can choose relationships for your contacts. So you can teach the car, for example, your mother's name, your father's name, your brother, and so that way when you're driving along, you don't have to say, call Jim Smith, you can just have it say, call father, and it will do that to make things a little bit easier. One thing I like about that, though, is if you go to the very top of the relationships page, you can delete all relationships, just in case you're done with your family. You don't want to be a part of them anymore. I forget them. You can delete them from your BMW infotainment system forever. And so those are the quirks and features of the new M850i. Now it's time to get it out on the road and drive it. All right, driving the m 850i. Now the first thing you notice when you get in this car, the steering wheel is nice and thick, like a true sporty automobile. I've been told to expect this car to be a little sportier than you might expect. The Mercedes S-Class Coupe is more of a luxury big coupe. Uh, the theory here with this one is it's intended to be a little bit more performance oriented. And I wasn't really sure if I believe that until I looked at the numbers. 520 horsepower, 060 and 36. I mean, this thing is actually pretty quick. Yeah, a lot of power, boy, you can feel it. Wow. Yeah, it really takes off, which is actually kind of surprising to me. Uh, it really feels more sporty than luxury when you're kind of stepping on it. And it has a lot of torque. Um, this is this is why I like V8s. It's, a, it's that little stab of the throttle that you get just an incredible reward of power and torque and it starts going, you know. They can turbocharge all the six cylinders in the world. It doesn't quite have that same feel like a V8. Sitting here in a stoplight, the car is very quiet, very nice, very luxurious. It feels it feels very nice. The sound is surprisingly good. I'm in sport mode and it, you can really hear quite an exhaust note. It really has an angry growl to it, which is surprising. The throttle response is just instantaneous. It's quite impressive. The interior in this car is very, very nice, and I really love that mood lighting. It's just so cool, and it's especially so cool how it's really a part of it. I mean, in some cars, it's just like in the footwells or whatever, but in this car, you can set it, and it really is very much in your field of view, and it does kind of have an effect on your mood. This car is big. There's no question about it. Um, over 190 inches long for a two-door car is always pretty big, but uh, about the same size as the old 8 Series. I drove the old 8 Series, and it actually feels a little bit bigger, um, only because it isn't quite as tight. Um, there's a little bit more play in the steering, there's a little bit less immediate throttle response, etc., etc., and so it just sort of feels like a car that isn't as dialed in. I really like the throttle response. It's just fantastic. In sport mode, it's really, really good. The ride quality is really good. Even in sport mode, it feels very nice. Obviously, this is a very daily drivable car for people who don't, you know, have kids or want to load anything in the back with reasonable frequency. The steering feel is surprisingly good. Like most modern BMWs, it's a little lighter and vague, more vague than the older models. Um, it's just got a little bit more luxury feel to the steering. However, um, it's also pretty precise and the car just doesn't feel all that big when you're actually steering it. The thing I'm most impressed with though is the acceleration. I mean, this is fantastic. If there is an M8, I struggle to understand why you would need it. It's just wonderful. The throttle response is just great. And the car feels really stable at speed. I'm um, going real fast in the rain on the highway here and it just feels like it could be going 
another 40 miles an hour, no problem. It feels really good. And so that's the BMW M850i. In a market that's obsessed with SUVs, I have no idea if this thing will be a success. The Mercedes-Benz S-Class Coupe has basically been a resounding failure with slow sales and big discounts. But if you're looking for a luxurious big coupe with attractive styling and surprisingly sporty driving characteristics, this is your car. And now it's time to give it a Doug score. Starting with the weekend categories and styling, the new 8 Series is a handsome car, not stunning, but very nice looking, and it gets a 7 out of 10. Acceleration does 0 to 60 in 3.6 seconds, and it gets an 8 out of 10. Handling is sharp, surprisingly so given its size, and it gets a 7 out of 10. Fun factor is good, though fun isn't this car's primary objective, but it's more exciting than I expected it to be, and it gets a 6 out of 10. Cool factor is decent. The 8 Series is back, but this revival isn't that thrilling, since BMW has already been near this segment with the 6 Series for a while and it gets a 6 out of 10 for a total weekend score of 34 out of 50. Next up are the daily categories and features. This car is well equipped, but this particular one is a little light on features as it's missing a sunroof and some other stuff, and it gets an 8 out of 10. Comfort is strong, and it gets a 7 out of 10. Quality is high, the interior is gorgeous, though any of us who's ever owned a used BMW knows long-term reliability may be a bit of an issue, and it gets a 7 out of 10. Practicality is good, it has a big trunk and a fairly big back seat for a two-door car, and it gets a 4 out of 10. Finally, value. It's actually well-priced versus rivals, but it's still a new car that will suffer from big depreciation. It gets a 6 out of 10 for a total daily score of 32 out of 50. Add it up, and the Doug score is 66 out of 100. And here's how it stacks up against rivals. It just edges out the Lexus LC. The LC is cooler looking, and Lexus quality is unbeatable, but the BMW is more fun to drive and a little more thrilling. The 8 Series also beats out the aging Mercedes SL, no surprise, though the BMW loses out to more expensive stuff like the Aston Martin Vantage and the Ferrari Portofino, especially when it comes to the weekend categories. Now, speaking of the infotainment screen, I've covered a lot of the features of BMW's latest infotainment system in my review of the new M5, which I will link in the description below. So in this video, I'm mostly oing... <laughs>